like joke rappers who play video games and have video game YouTubes drop records and they go gold. They're handing out they're handing out plaques like it's like it's candy on Halloween. Right. If streams were the de definition of albums that influence people, 808s and heartbreaks, transatlanticism, donuts from Dilla would be the highest streaming things of all time. If I'm gonna accompany string sections for people and things like that. I want to do it with the RZA and Rock Marciano. If you're yeah. not from New York and don't know who Rock Marciano is, and you love Low 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 Low, are yeah. you going to be excited that I'm doing string arrangements for Rock Marciano? I don't know, but I can't let that stunt my growth as somebody who wants to develop further as an artist. <laughs> What's up, geniuses? Welcome back to For the Record, and I'm your host, Rob Markman. I'm really excited about this week's guest, okay? A friend of mine, but besides that, one of the most talented artists, one of the most talented songwriters, <laughs> producers, musicians that you will ever meet. He has an album out. It's not so new. He kind of put it out, sat on it, let it sink in, and now he's doing the interview. It's called Glory Sound Prep, okay? Mr. John Bellion. Thank Welcome you for to having Record, me, man. Brother. Good to see you. Good nah, to see man. You. What's good, man? How you feeling I'm today? Chilling. I feel really good. Yeah? Woke up this morning, took the dog out. Made okay. a little trip to Brooklyn, come see you. It's good times. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me and the dog today. Um, man, one, I, I just want to give you props. And because, you know, I found out about your music many years ago through a friend of mine named Sermon. I was in Seattle to go see. This is when Kanye West was on the Yeezus tour. Okay. And I was in Seattle. I didn't know anybody in Seattle, but, you know, I'm on Twitter. I'm like, hey, Seattle, what's there to do in Seattle? This dude named Sermon hits me up on Twitter like, yo, I love your work. I would love to come meet with you. I'm like, come to the hotel. He starts playing me a bunch of music. He plays me yours. And I remember um, listening, I think maybe it was Jim Morrison at the time, and how incredibly talented you were. Oh, man. Thank you. And I just, I was like, why doesn't like the entire world <laughs> know about this guy, John yeah. Bellion? And, and, and oh, you know, you. since thank then you. we started developing a relationship, you know, writer, reporter, artist. 100%. 100%. Um, so we have a bit of a relationship. You know, I want to say that to put that out there. But um, your latest album, Glory Sound Prep, like I said, it came out in November. Yeah. But you've been really quiet. Most artists drop an album, yeah. go on a press run. Here's my album. <laughs> And you did yeah. the exact opposite, opposite man. Yeah. Um, what was that? What was the thought process between It's almost refreshing also, man. 100%. 100%. So, so what was the thought process between that? I think I'm in a place in my life where I think it's more of my responsibility to stay passionate about what I love and, and what I love to do. And that's just making music. I think the fame and all this different stuff is is a funny game. It's like a funny thing that we're weaving in and we're trying to find balance mentally, spiritually, physically, in, in all of these things. And I'm realizing like when the human condition took a life that I wasn't necessarily prepared for, yeah. I, I want, uh, yeah, cool, singles and all these different things. I was on the road for almost a year and a half doing right. interviews I didn't want to do, doing things I didn't want to do, and I was miserable. Right. So I'm thinking, you know, it hit me one day I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. Like, right. whoa, like what a concept. And I think it's a matter of me dealing with whatever the opinions that come from that. Oh, he doesn't do interviews anymore. Or he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. But like, I'm happy in like the real world. Mm -hmm. So if I'm working on an album, the fun part for me is working on the album. It's not fun for me to go to Q102 Jingle Jam and shake some dude's hand who has no idea the music or the references I'm pulling from and whatever. It doesn't make me happy. I know you. The album's been out. I wanted to wait a little bit when the album dropped because I knew the core fan base would be a little, this isn't what I expected. What's going on? This is Because it's. I'm trying to push things further. I'm trying to move things further. So as far as waiting, I think it's, last time I did every interview under the sun. And by the time you saw your 15th interview, you're like, he did the monster. He works this. He does everything himself. And it, okay, now what? Like, let's wait for this until there's something to talk about. At least wait till a little... People have an opinion about that. I'm not a 24-hour review of like, right. you know what I mean? It's, right. it's it's funny too. Like, I feel like I'm talking too much already. No, but go ahead. This is it's funny too. Like, when the Human Condition first came out and the 24-hour reviews came out, it was this is all over the place. I hate this. I don't even I don't even understand where he's coming from. And then it turned into now that Glory Sound Prep came out, those same interviewers are like. Not gonna lie, a couple of those records made my playlist. They've aged well, but this new one. <laughs> Glory Sound Prep is just too all over. It's, I hate it. Uh, so it's like, what's the point in 
coming out the gate and whatever. Let it settle. I'm so, living my life. I'm, you know what I mean? So, so that, that, that brings me to it. And The Human Condition was your album before yep. Glory Sound Prep. Um, you know, it reminds me of a lyric, was never focused on getting bigger, just getting better. That's why I keep getting bigger after every record. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like, listen, this is the music business and it's the music 100%. industry. And I feel like when you're going out there and making these records, it's not necessarily for the industry. I, I really no. feel like you're challenging yourself each time, like if you could top the last thing that you 100%. did. A hundred percent. And you know, like I was saying, remaining staying passionate about something is what's what's musical development, like getting bigger and getting better. Getting better is really what I think of me getting better is. And the difference between paying a trumpet player to come for luxury, let's say, and I had to pay him to be there and I'm chopping it up on an NPC, musical growth to me is an eight minute outro with Quincy Jones, like right. going doing horn arrangements with a guy like that, performed by members of the Roots, the Dap Kings, you know, the John Baptiste band, and an outro violin solo from a member of Snarky Puppy. Right. Is that is Susie from Arkansas who loves all time low and wants catchy same John Bellion to regurgitate himself over and over again going to appreciate that? Is that going to get me streamed? Is that going to cause a stink on social media? I don't know, but that's musical development to me. So challenging myself on this album is a different type of head nod when I walk in the studio. Like the streams, like, like joke rappers who play video games and have video game YouTubes drop records and they go gold. They're handing out they're handing out plaques like it's like it's candy on Halloween. Right. So stream is is is, is a str if if streams were the de definition of albums that influence people, eight oh eight and heartbreaks, transatlanticism, donuts from Dilla would be the highest streaming things of all time. But right. they're not Sergeant Peppers. Would, you know what I'm saying? So you're chasing more greatness than of a hundred percent. If I'm gonna start rapping more, who do I want to rap around? If I'm doing stri if I'm gonna accompany string sections for people and things like that. I want to do it with the RZA and Rock Marciano. If you're yeah. not from New York and don't know who Rock Marciano is, and you love Low 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 Low, are right. you going to be excited that I'm doing string arrangements for Rock Marciano? I don't know, but I can't let that stunt my growth as somebody who wants to develop further as an artist. Th though I will say, if I'm a John Bellion fan, then I'm expected to go places a thousand percent where I maybe wouldn't normally go with totally. with my other artists. Exactly. That I love. All Time Low was a goal where. I want a top rec I want a top ten record, and I want to produce 100 percent of it myself. Write 100. percent That's a goal of mine. Right. After that, what am I? Ch I have to stay passionate about what I love to do. And so yeah. Is, is Glory Sound Prep now? It feels like a masterclass. 100 percent. In a lot of ways, yeah. is, is that is that the kind of the theme behind it? You you dropped the trailer, the animated trailer, which looked beautiful. Thank with, you. Um, Stormzy yeah. um, played the headmaster, the yeah. voice of the headmaster. Yeah. And and it sets up the album. It feels like a, a, a really the graduating of the master class. Yeah, a hundred percent. I just wanted to take it to a place where I don't know, when you dive deeper, you have to tune into what's being said, tune into what I'm talking about or whatever. And I want that to take a second. Like like I'm okay with that patience. I can pull that off now. Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not a financial thing where I'm still living in my parents' house and I gotta get this off the ground. I gotta make catchy streamable things to get fans. I have them here. So but, now let's let's at least if as long as I have you, I wanna challenge you and, and bring you to a place where like when all time low works and Susie from Arkansas who has my face on her chief this is it mood board, right. she's she might not appreciate what how I'm growing, but I also didn't expect all time low and the human condition right. to do what it did. You know what I'm saying? If a lot of if you like the old me, there's plenty of artists that do what I was doing four years ago. They do it very well now. For me, it's just not how I could remain passionate about the gifts that God gave me. Mm. That's my goal is to remain balanced and happy with what I'm doing. Rapping more, a six minute mixtape hosted by Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z mm -hmm. with all beats from Twami. Who right. is that gonna get me streams? Does right. anybody know who T Twami is? No, but I Twami right. reminds me of Dilla Incarnate. Like I hear Twami stuff and I'm like, the world needs to hear this. Right. Maybe I could use my position of my platform or my privilege or whatever to cross things so that Susie from Arkansas who right. likes All Time Low can maybe, I could be the the science kit, the f baby's first science kit to get the, I could be the the link to that. You right. know what I'm saying? It, like I said, is that gonna get me, popping? is that gonna get me streams? No, but it's gonna get me a different head nod when I walk in the studio. Right. This, is, this is my catalog. I have to live with these. I have to right. play these songs when we go on tour. We do Jones Beach, we do this. I don't want to stand up and regurgitate myself and do the same thing. I can't, right. I can't do that. You know what I mean? Is it, is it torturous? Is it, is, it, is it something that drives you? Because we've seen you work, we've seen you in the studio um, do videos that you, you, know, you do a lot of making ups. Is it like a mad scientist thing going on? <laughs> like there is always that like ego thing where you're like, 
an artist texts you yeah. that's huge on the side and it's like I don't even want to put my stuff out after listening to Glory yeah. Sound Prep or something like right. that and then there's not like Eminem said it Austin said, I don't feel I'll ever get the props I feel I ever right. deserve or whatever and I think we all feel that way we, we, we're gonna get into that I, I want to <laughs> get into because uh, I have questions about that too um, one of the standout tracks on, on, on GSP album um, Let's Begin yeah which um, features the RZA Rock Marciano Black Keys and Travis Mendez, who are, who are obviously part of a beautiful mind. That's your crew. Yes. Um, a lot of people were surprised. Me myself, I had heard a version of that record. Again, full disclosure, I was in the studio with you before you put it out. I heard a version of that record. Oh, off the Dilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, but the there was beat, there yeah. was there was no there wasn't Rock Form. Marcy wasn't on it. One hundred percent. And I, I know you were thinking about putting somebody on it. There was some discussions. I was surprised to hear Rock Marcy on Rock Marciano on it. Yeah. Um. And I know a lot of your fans are probably surprised. Yeah, I'm, How, I'm sure 75% of my fans don't know who that is. But I'm maybe sure, Susie I'm from sure. Arkansas, no, like maybe Susie from Arkansas right now is listening to Behold the Dark Horse. Uh, exactly. Because of John Bellion, which exactly. is dope. Exactly, yeah. And I think too, like even in the record, I'm better than everybody pretends to be, so ask the label now, why the fuck would I want an urban feature? It's, it's I'm going to put an artist on my shit because he's, I find him incredible and he inspires me because he doesn't do what I do. He's not from the same place as me. He's not from, in the in a book, you wouldn't read the same chapter with John Bellion and Rock Marciano. Right. But that's, I've been working my whole life to have access to these types of people right. to just experiment and have fun and stay passionate about what I'm right. doing, you know? It, it was dope. It was a nice, because if you're a Rock Marciano fan, um, you know, he had a dope year last year, Behold the Dark Horse, um, Rosebud's Revenge 2 came oh out. God. He did the yeah. album with Mugs, and then the feature on on, on your album as he's well. It really Keith felt Tipperton, like... He's, he's just, yeah, he's yeah, Victory, continue. Like, he's, super, super, super dope dude. Yeah. So, so how did that? How did that come up? Is that just a simple phone call? Like, yo, he I dropped a whole person. dark horse. I, I bought it from his website, and I'm like, yo, he's charging crazy loot for his album, but he's commanding that respect. It's not through a label, and he's getting it off the ground himself. And he's a smart guy. From just listening to his raps, you could tell yeah. he's a businessman. He's a this. He's yeah. a that. So, it was just literally like last two weeks of the album, and I'm like, yo, I really want to do a string section with him. I would love to conduct these high expensive strings, get string players to come in and have him kind of do that day before a heist yeah. thing that he does so well. I saw a tweet the other day, Rock Marciano makes the type of record where before somebody robs somebody, they're looking out the window and yeah. they're listening to rock. Um, so I just, literally, I just was like, I'm a huge fan, this, that, and a third. And he was like, yo, you from Long Island? He's like, I'm from Hempstead. I was like, I'm from Long Island, from Lake Grove. So then from there, it was just like, let me play you some joints. I played him the joint I did with Quincy and. Mm -hmm. Showed him that Rizzo was going to be on. Let's begin in this, that, and the third. And he was just like, "I'm in. He's, I'm, I'm getting my tux ready for the Grammys." And I'm get, I was, I was like, "All right, cool." That's dope, man. Yeah. And, and, and shout out to Jazz to my man Jazz. I remember when Behold the Dark Horse came out. He sent it to me. Jazz, you know, manages and works with Rock. And I'm like, "What are you doing? I'm not opening this link that you sent me. I want to go on the website and buy it because Rock also took a stand business wise." Um, for independent artists totally. who may not be able to have the clout in the streaming industry. So he said, Hold let me put my album out. And get it how it... And, and, and at least get in the black. And get what you deserve. Before, right. Totally. Um, so shout out to them, man. They're doing amazing things. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, because I kind of bring Rock up and, and, and you talk about it too, because you said, you know, if you're, you're not reading from the same book, people wouldn't normally put you guys in the studio together. You know, and when I looked you up on, on Apple Music, I, it was just a thing. I was like, let me... To actually look up Glory Sound Prep on Apple Music. I actually bought the record, but I'm like, let me check it out. And you're in the pop section. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I think in this industry and the way we categorize things, I, I think there's some importance to that. But it's very misleading to say John Bellion is, is just a pop artist. And, and you know, I say all that to say because you also take your rap very seriously. And let's begin again. It's like, I just left L.A. to cook in Brooklyn, the Winner's Reaper. I sleep in Tim's and the Yankee Fitted, and that's just for leisure. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the New Yorker in you is, is right. Is, when you played that, that for me in the studio, yeah. that that's one of the lines that stood out because if if, if you're a fan of John Bellion or, or 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 think that or just want to put you in the pop lane, like that's a bar that you might get off of a K Slay mixtape in 2005. <laughs> totally, right? totally, totally, totally. Um, talk about why that's important to you because it, you know even if I look at you and you're my man and we have a lot of conversations about rap. I wouldn't think rapper. hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? And, and underground rapper. Yeah, at that. yeah. I think, uh, I mean, artists are contradictory at, in nature. So they say, I don't care what you think about me, but then that makes you like them so that you buy their album. Mm -hmm. So every artist that says, I don't care what you think about me, 
go buy my album, like you have to care to a degree what people think. Because if no one buys your album, goes to your shows, then you're not gonna have a business. You're not gonna be able to make a living, do what you love to do. That being said, I, to a degree on this one, I just don't care. Let's get rock. Let's get the RZA. I just don't care. And then I do a record like Stupid Deep. We're gonna put out the acoustic soon with a six person string section and seven person choir and we can approach these records. I have to remain passionate and explore. I have to do that for my set like for my sanity. I don't want to be a slave and regurgitating myself with everything I'm doing. As far as underground rap goes, yeah, I could make a song like All Time Low, play it on Jimmy Fallon, and then rap a verse over a Dilla joint that I wrote, like I did on the performance in Fallon. But All Time Low got me to to spit in front of Black Thought and the Roots. And those are those are some of my heroes. It doesn't sit with me and my spirit to not jump into the bar talk and step on the basketball court and be like, I'm going to play with you guys and I'm going to do this the right way and go through the proper channels to show my respect and my love for hip hop. And I have to go through that channel. That's just what feels right in my spirit. I'm not going to go to the old people's home and play pick up five on five with a bunch of 80 year olds and think I'm the man. Right. So me, pop, me rapping on a pop whatever and the song goes number one and it's streaming out of control like yeah there's a bunch of records that stream out of control with rap on it that doesn't mean that they're great records and they're going to last in history like i said if streaming represented impact and influence and respect a much different albums would be the new Pac album would be number one for for right. a long time that right. record is phenomenal and what he's putting together musically is amazing right. so it's like to answer your question i just feel a necessity coming from wherever I come from is that I want to take the right channels and I don't care who I lose in that situation because right. I've already done well for myself and yeah. my fan base is going to come with me. If I could keep 75% of my core fans that will follow me and if I if I need to shave off the 25 that just say this isn't what I expect from him because I need John Billing mm -hmm. to be one thing, mm -hmm. I don't need them coming you, to the I'm show. I'm going to challenge you a bit too uh, yeah. because respectfully because you know you referenced like what you might lose maybe losing like the, the Susie from Arkansas. Yeah. But I, I listen to Glory Sound Club and all I see is what there is to gain. Because, a thousand percent. Because th there's still songs like, uh, actually one of my favorite songs on the album is The Internet. Thank um, you. JT, the John Travolta song, also very, if you love John Belly and The Human Condition and, and, and All Time Low, these are songs that are, are directly going to speak to you and grab you right away. 100%. While other songs like, you know, I want to get into real quick, Adult Swim, you know, may take a little longer for that fan to get into, but still a dope record. Exactly. So exactly. you said it was produced by Twami. Shout out to Twami. I first heard of Twami because he produced a trap for Sky Zoo. It was one of my favorite Sky Zoo tracks called Nah Five Bad Boy Logo. When Sky played me that joint, it was that beat amazing. Is, is so stupid. I begged Sky for the beat. Yep. Of I even freestyled over it. I said, Sky, I need that beat. He said, Listen, do not <laughs> send this to anybody. <laughs> totally, totally. And then off of that, Twami reached out like. And you know, I learned who Twami was, and then Twami sent me some of his stuff. Dude is incredible. Ridiculous. This is how I found out about Twami. Yeah. Um, how he, did you find out about Twami? Like, how would my buddy Mylon has been plugged me into since college? We, he does um, MP work, like NPC work for the live shows, and he plugged me into the Flying Lotuses and the the different people throughout our college years. But he was like, no, 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 get on this. Like people in Brooklyn or people in some of the boroughs are really listening to this person and this person yeah. and kind of plug me in. He then showed me a Twami beat one time. We were on tour with 21 Pilots and uh, I threw it up on a like highlight reel video because I love the beat so much. And he just hit me up and was like, yo, thanks. Or like he retweeted it or something to that effect. So when we were working on the album, I was like, yo, I think I want to do some sort of a rap mixtape in one stream. Like I want to do like, you know, you mentioned K Slay, how right. K Slay hosts mixtapes. Yeah. It's like, yo, it'd be cool if Piccolo from Dragon Ball so Z was the host of the mixtape, like on Namek, the plan. If you're into Dragon Ball Z, then yeah. you'll be able to appreciate it. But so then when he came to the studio, he had like, I'm not joking, like 600 beats, like 700 right. beats. And they were 20 seconds long, just like a Dilla thing, just like you find right. on like an old mixtape in your car from the 90s from Dilla or whatever. And he played me some joints, and I was like, whoa. And. I think everything remained exactly the same that he produced except for the last beat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm on an island where opiates go to rich kids and right. they pass away. It's called Death Over the Privilege. It's like that last beat, there's a string arrangement. There's guitar players. We brought in like a ton of to people to kind of flesh that out as far as. But, but the beat selection really is, is, is all, all four of those joints, even though that we tease in the middle is, is his beats. The, the yeah. beat changes several times. If you're unfamiliar, just to set it up, I know we've been having a lot of conversation about 
Travis Scott sickle mode and everybody loves how the beat changes. Yeah. And it is dope to have such a, a high charting record, a very popular record with that. But it, it's a very hip hop thing to do in a very hip hop totally. way to think. Um, and, and I like the way you described it as a K Slay, almost a mixtape on one track. Yeah. And Tommy supplied the facelift. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think too, we're at a place in music where we just have people for time amounts. Like, the time you hit play and the time that you're going, like music's going to a place where it's really more about keeping somebody's attention within that stream that you're yeah. listening to. It's not necessarily like one track, two track, three track, four track. So if I could put information and, and keep it switching and moving in a way, I think that's kind of where music's going. I think Travis did a great job on his album with right. it. And yeah. So how'd you get Piccolo? Um, Chris Sabat, yeah. the, the voice of, of Piccolo from Dragon Ball, v, uh, Dragon Ball Z fame. First time I heard it, I was like, yo, is this a sample? And then I'm starting to hear it. I'm like, this is not a sample. No, yeah, he came. This is, this is Piccolo, really that's Piccolo. Piccolo. <laughs> it's really How'd him. you get, where'd you find Piccolo at? <laughs> um, so basically, there was a couple of fans at Funimation who do the dubbing for American versions of Dragon Ball Z. We went to go visit there when I was on tour, and I just met him. And I remember saying to a couple of the guys, like, I, I want to utilize you guys at some point. Like, we need to work. And he's just the coolest, nicest dude ever. I got his phone number through the guys at Funimation and just called him. was like, you ever heard of, what's your favorite mixtapes? He started mentioning, like, Green Lantern and a bunch of different people. And then I was literally like, do you, would you want to host this mixtape? But can you do it from the performance of Piccolo, like, speaking to whatever? She's like, let's do it. And then it actually, the new Brawly Dragon Ball Z movie comes out soon. I have a part in that. And we kind of like traded off, like brought him into my world. He brought me into his so world. So you're the so Dragon Ball like, Z movie too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a small part. It's, it's yeah, it's it's good. It's a, it's a good time. Tell me, it's a good I thought we was friends, man. <laughs> man. The new Dragon Ball Z movie. Yeah. Um, that was dope. I want to break down again when we just get into bar work and we get into some more. Um, my, this is off for um, Adult Swim. My stance here as a band leader is Pangea. Yeah. My heart free, I'm Coheed and Cambria. Yeah. I rock steady, my Johnson's Dwayne Heavy. <laughs> then you go all the way, then there's a third eye blind reference. Yeah, yeah, Break yeah. Break this down, because it starts with my stance here as a band leader is Pangea. Pangea. Yeah, I think it's just, as a, there's a difference between live shows and in the studio. And we've developed a live show with my buddies from, from college for such a long time that I'm a performer now. Like my stance here is band leader is Pangea. My heart's frio, Spanish cold. I'm cold heater. Cold heat in Cambria is like a rock group. So then once I jumped on that like rock group references, cold heat in Cambria, a rock steady. That's a no doubt album. Yeah. Um, so another rock group, a rock steady. My Johnson's Dwayne Heavy, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Um, that's Dwayne Heavy. I just erase heroes. I, I'll stand Lee. Uh, I'll stand Lee. You. I erase heroes as yeah. if Stan Lee was designing a hero. But Leah bleeds into Leah Remini. I stand Leah Remini. I'm the king of queens. My bars breed LeBron's Kia. So LeBron does the Kia commercials and LeBron's sitting in the Kia. I carry greatness. The Kia is not really the greatest car, but inside of that Kia is greatness. Oh, <laughs> Statements on spaceship. Haitians get LASIK, meaning you dread what comes from my third eye blind to the fake shit. But third eye blind is another rock group. So there's there's a lot of like annotative genius things that could go so on. So you, wrote, you, wrote, you wrote that for genius. I, I, you, you wrote that to be annotated. <laughs> I, I know you were thinking of me when you were making those bars. We appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, we'll do man. the yellow wall thing where the, the <laughs> lyrics come up. Yeah, Super sure. dope. Uh, another one I want to ask you about. <laughs> um, I pick up the phone and someone tells me Mr. Belly and Sir Beyonce on the line. She's trying to reach you on your cellular. Yeah. She wanted to fall in line, but we gave it to Aguilera. I hope it's the right decision. They wanted it for the twin she signed. Like, what's the backstory here? Did, 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 yeah. How much can you say? Did Beyonce really call you? Was yeah. it a representative of, yeah, no, of no, Parkwood? See, yeah. It, it was an amazing situation. Long story short, I was broke as a joke. And we made a song called Fall in Line the day we made Luxury. This was like three years ago. Okay. I haven't really been making outside records for people as of the past couple of years because the music of my artistry has been doing pretty well. I'm about right. to get back into a more of a... Glory Sound Prep is also the name of like my Neptune's crew, me, Mark right. Williams, and Volta, and we're a triad of, we want to get Glory Sound Prep credits on a bunch of people's albums. Wow. So it's like the school is also a metaphor for like, if you come to this school, we can provide you with, with dope shit. But as far as the Beyonce thing goes, I just got a phone call one day that, no, no, I got an email from her A&R, and it was like, she loves the song for her group, for her group. We know that there's heat on the song, and a lot of people want it. Chloe She'd like Kelly to call you. So. I'm sure they pulled an executive move where they thought if she just called me on the phone and I'd be in, that would be enough to whatever. And she was actually super normal and cool. And I was like, whoever sounds the best on it and whatever the best opportunity for the record is, we'll do that. If it was for Beyonce, I would have been like, 
let's go. But at the time, I was broke as a joke. Like, you can't blame me. So when I had the prospect of it being Christina Aguilera and Demi Lovato, lead single, da 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 opposed to those two girls who are ridiculously, oh, yeah, yeah. stupidly yeah. talented, who I'd be honored to work with in any form and capacity. But for a broke guy trying to get at the time before having right. hits or money still living in my parents' house, it was one of those moments where it was like, what's the best place for this to live for me to further my career and whatever. And I, they're blowing up. They deserve Grammys, the world, the whole nine. But for me, producing the record and writing it with a, a writer named Audrey May, it just, that was the moment where I was like, I had to kind of email the A&R back after speaking to Beyonce, like, yo, I think we're going to give it to so-and-so. And she ripped me a new one. She was like, right. she called you. She took the time to do it. She was super gracious and right. cool, but it was just, I was broke. Like, That's like, so and, and she'll, <laughs> look, look, looking back on it, I, I'm sure, you know, it's a very artist thing that you did too, and and, and just the, the fact that you like well, whoever sounds best on the record, it also like you know totally. But you know, part of the lyric is, I hope it's the right decision. Yeah. Congratulations, Fall in Line is nominated for a Grammy. For a Grammy, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, is it the right? Was it the right decision? Looking back, on yeah, it now? I think so. I mean, so it'll be sounds so like flexy. It'll be my second Grammy, but this is for Fall in Line. I produced. I, right. I made the beat for. I was the producer on it, and the other record I won a Grammy for was a for writing called. for the monster. Yeah, and that, a little record called that the did monster well. By yeah, Eminem so and Rihanna. if I could get a Grammy for writing, which I have, and if this goes and it's for producing, if I could go for a third one, and I think a record like Stupid Deep or something that could end up garnishing me the radio play or whatever, it would be cool to have one for producing for somebody else, one for writing for somebody else, and then one for myself. That's like the three goal I guess that I have in my, you know write it down and put it in a box and put it away and it'll like put it into actuality. Right. So yeah, I think it was the right decision. The fact that it's nominated for a Grammy and I produced it is, that's, again, that's a that's more of a catalog, lineage, history, impressive thing. That's that's a different type of head nod when you walk in right. the studio, so. so and, and so with GSP, with Glory Sound Prep, because I remember when you were doing The Human Condition that you, you had, I remember you talking about that you stopped writing for folks, you, you didn't, you yeah. weren't giving your energy you know, away or you know, you've done a ton of records. But now you're back to that. Now that Glory Sound Prep is 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 out. Totally, you're out. Okay. Yeah, so. I think it, it's too. That's why we moved the tour down further. Just because at a certain point, if you never go for it, it'll never happen. Because the label and management and everybody wants the artist thing to go, the artist thing to go. But I, I really want to do records for other people. You know, it's it's definitely on my my list of things. You talk about one thing. I, I want to ask you about this thing has been online. Rampant. Um, just talking about your influence again. The, 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 first of all, you have a huge fan base, wildly successful, and and there's, there's still a part like you're still kind of I, I feel unknown. Like yeah, the industry totally. secret. Like you know, what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. like like the guy that everybody, the most known unknown. <laughs> if I could quote um, Three Six Mafia, but there was a lot of talk online on Reddit and stuff like that. AJR had a song called Netflix Trip, and compared sounds a lot like human in terms of progression mm. um you know there's been talk of charlie puth's attention um you know with similar bass lines to guillotine and and okay. a lot of elements I'm there so down, sound, you want to go down that road i, I just want to know because like how do you feel like yeah. is, is that something that that is homage to you and you and, and you feel good if, if you can hear john bellion-esque things in other music or um is it something that annoys you, you know? It's a phenomenal question. Um, I think that they're all incredibly talented in their own right. And if I can provide them with some sort of inspiration, that's really why I do it at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, for me to be upset about something to that effect, in however you want to view it or whatever it is, my ideas aren't necessarily coming from me. When I get into the studio, these things are getting pulled out of thin air. They're messages, they're vibrations, they're whatever. So for me to say, I was ripped off, I was this, or I was that, I think that's a bad road to go down. I think that's a bad mentality to have, and it'll kind of jade you trying to stay passionate and about the gifts that you've been given. So I think, I think more power to them. I think I really make music to be, you know, if, if Andre 3000 walked in a room, my mom would not give two shits. If Andre 3000 walked in a room, I would puke on the floor. Right. If Rick Rubin walked in a room, my dad would not give a shit who Rick Rubin is. Right. I would. So that's the type of person I would like to be. I, I like being an unknown, known, if you know, you know, in the words of 
great push to if you if you know you know like if that's that's something that's i can hang my head high and say on a record like glory sound prep okay if glory sound prep doesn't go number one but there will end up being another situation like the two you recall where someone and i know from getting text messages from many artists and producers and guys like yourself and yeah. whoever it'll inspire them and i and i have to kind of be ready i think kanye said it in an interview where he was like if i if money came with influence, I'd be a bajillionaire. Right. You know what I'm saying? And to a certain degree, I agree with that. You it know would, what I'm saying? It would be interesting because Glory Sound Prep is, um, I think it's wild while to sink in because there's a lot there. If it totally, starts to, totally. to shift what music sounds like, mm -hmm. y like you can't quantify that. Like, you, you know can't, what I'm saying? But you it's, can't. It's and, it's feeling... not, and I can stand all day and say, this person and this person sound like me and I'm getting... When I do check Twitter, uh, I'm getting tweets or whatever that people saying so and so song sounds just like you. This person's song sounds just like you. What am I gonna What am I gonna do? Be the angry guy who makes all the headlines that says John Bellion sues so and so for for what? Like if, if I'm trying to inspire people, some people don't get the flowers until they pass away. Right. If I can make an album that impacts people over the course of the two years that I drop that album in, and they want to take stuff from it or whatever. I think that just more speaks volumes to the creative that I am. And that's what we should concentrate on, opposed to me being upset if they're inspired by the gifts I was given. It's, it's all good. It's, it's, it's just, it's not really about me. I think it's about just, just being gracious and appreciating my position and be able to do this for a living. If people want to take from that, that's what this whole thing is. Like I come from Dilla, I come from Death Cab for Cutie. I've, I've taken many things that, you know what I'm saying? That, I've picked up from listening to their music, you know. Uh, we we have we have the records here to show it. I I was gonna save this, but you know, a record like just talking about John Bellion's influences and, and take some of the DNA. A record like Enter the Wu Tang, Helm by the RZA, <laughs> right? On your album, let's what's crazy begin. is back in the days where I was making beats as a young like kid in high school and stuff. A lot of people remember a lot of those verses. A lot yeah. of the Raekwon stuff is my favorite too. Yeah. But the beats, it was the beat. It was like, what is this irreverent? Mm -hmm sloppy but still so sharp and dangerous the rizza is the rizza yeah the rizza is the rizza there's not much to say about that this, this guy right here jay dilla oh boy donuts um yeah what's crazy is growing up i didn't have any of the dilla vinyls i had back in college in times like this my boy mylon would put like 200 dilla beats on one of those like rom cds yeah. like in my car and i would just so i don't even know Right. I just know I have certain beats from Dilla. Like I might be able to identify him because he does, right. does a joint for Buster or Common or something like that. But as far as just beats by themselves, I don't even know their names. But they've been the most influential things on like my drum pockets like throughout the years. You know. Do you have donuts on vinyl now? Yes, I have everything on vinyl because now. Because if, if not, <laughs> this would be yours. Yeah. Um, on your album, Quincy Jones. Yeah. Um, yeah. How'd you how, how'd you get to work with Quincy on um, Maz joint? Yeah, Maz joint. Um, Man, I was in the airport one day. I know Quincy Jones on paper and what everybody says is the greatest producer of all time. So that's that's I was like, okay, let me let me dive into what's going on. Like when he was really young and what what was he doing at the time in context of history? Cuz I believe the only context for a good album is time. You can't sonic relevance and all of these different things don't 24-hour reviewers and the, the age that we live in doesn't count. Cuz I remember I was 15 and heard Ways and Heartbreaks and hated it. And now it's the only Kanye record that I go back to regularly. So time and history. So I'm thinking in the context of history, what he when he put out, I was listening to Smack Water Jack from, mm -hmm. I don't know what year 70 something that it came right. out, but uh, what he did on that joint, I realized it was the Kill Bill. Yeah. I'm hearing all these different things and I'm like, yo, this guy was like, I get, yeah, greatest producer of all time. And I'm a big fan of getting the roses, getting the flowers while you can still smell them. Um, so for me, I read an interview recently of him just taking the Beatles and skewing them. Like, right. this dude doesn't give a damn yeah. about anybody. No so I'm like, let me send him these records. And that's the type of cosign that I think would be great. And he ended up liking it so much to the point where it was like, hey, would you like to narrate this horn arrangement, you know, because I want to get better at scoring films and doing horn arrangements and things like that. And he he really loved it. So he ended up speaking throughout the whole thing and talking over the eight minutes. And like I said, in the history scope, this will be that's crazy. That was like one of the biggest accomplishments for me to get him on, not go to his house and play him a song and meet him because two managers know each other. Right. I sent him the song Blind. He was like, yes, my buddy hooked it up, Clark Beckham. He's an incredible musician and helped me out because he signed to his management team. And and he dug it and was like, I want to be on this. I want to put my name on this in history. When he, when time goes by and we're all gone, he will be remembered as the greatest producer of all time. That's wild. 
that's a wild thing to have somebody like that on your album. It's, it's humbling. It's very awesome. humbling. Amazing, man. He's up there on the wall with the Thriller album, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know if you can answer it. You can give okay. me yes or no. You give me a head nod, a wink. Uh, but we, we had seen footage of you when you were in the Bahamas um, with Will Smith walks into the studio. Okay. And, and this is yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. And, and Cautionary Tales. No. On the album. Uh, which the I hook. didn't know was a thing until my... My buddy lives around the block from me. He was literally like, you know, a lot of people think that that's Will. Was he there in the Bahamas? Like, was that a thing? It's not him. It's my. That's my voice saying that. That's my <laughs> voice doing that. It's just me manipulating it to a place where it doesn't sound like me. A lot of people were like, is that KRS-One? Is that Will Smith? Well, he was in the studio, and then it just took a life of its own. I don't think it's my responsibility to wait online for false information to of come course. up so that I can correct it. Um, but no, it wasn't him. He he just stopped by the studio one day. We were in the same place in the Bahamas. I was finishing up Glory Sound Prep, and... He just stopped by out of just who's in the studio today, come through. Right. I played him a bunch of the album. He was like super into it. He was joking around, like, don't, don't please don't play me anymore because I'm gonna end up forcing you to put me on this album when everybody's laughing about it. But no, it wasn't him. It was he, he, <laughs> he chilled. We played him records. He was super into it. He was there for the rest of the trip. I saw him on the beach. I saw him this and that when we were mixing it down and doing everything. But no, super, super humble, cool dude. Yeah, everybody in the room was just like, what is. What is this? Like, Dumb. it was very random. It was a very random, cool thing. So no, it's, it's not him, unfortunately. That's the, okay, I, I told you that. I told you I'm gonna I'm crack the case for you. Um, <laughs> you know, I already knew the answer. I know y'all need to dance. I'm here for y'all. I'm here to, here to help y'all. Um, John, man, I really want to thank you for coming by and having this talk with me. Glory Sound Prep is really kind of a phenomenal album. It really takes us back to the way music used to be, where you would get an album from your artist maybe every two years and you had to sit with it and unravel it and over the past several months of, of this album come out you know all your fans myself included have been sitting with this and, and unraveled this album so i thank you for the album i thank you coming here and choosing us to talk oh about thank it, so. you for this whole thing man i you know we go back super long i think you're gonna go down in history as well you mentioned the quincy's the the sways of certain people that's 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 you and i'm honored to even be right. here and all you guys helping out and whatever i'm not huge on interviews and all this type of whatever, but if it's for the actual music and whatever, I respect you so highly and I'm, I'm proud to be here. That's love. I appreciate it, man. John Bellion, oh Glory Sound Prep. If you yep. ain't listen to it, listen to it now. I'm telling you, stream it, buy it. It's worth your time, your attention. You're going to love it, man. Thank you. Check us out next week for, for the record. Peace.